Welcome Protege to this tutorial on how to perform different matrix commands. We'll cover how to do over 15 commands. These aren't all of them, but I tried to choose the ones that will be most useful to you. Like we covered in the last tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and leverage the RANDI function to create matrices for us. I'm going to create two matrices X and Y. First command I'm going to show you is called cat. And we already covered this in tutorial three, but if you don't remember, I'll do a quick example for you. And remember we pass in three arguments into this command. I'm going to create a 3D matrix we want to pass 3 into the first argument and then our two matrices X and Y for the next two arguments. And this concatenated matrices X and Y into a 3D matrix. The next command is cross and this computes the cross product of the two matrices which computes a vector that is perpendicular to both of these vectors. So let's say X and Y is a 3 by 3 matrix of your vectors and Y is another 3 by 3 matrix of some other vectors. And we want to compute the cross product. And the function for that is called cross and pass in the two matrices that you want to compute the cross product on. So that computes cross product for each of those. So it will return three vectors that are perpendicular to your vectors in X and Y. Next we have the dot product and the function is dot and again you pass in your two matrices that you want to compute the dot product on. So for example if X and Y are made up of force vectors and we want to compute the overall force, this will return, the dot product will return that overall force that you applied. Next we have the determinant of a matrix and for this you must have a square matrix and X and Y are both squares. And this is the answer for the determinant of X. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new matrix. One of the things you can use a determinant for is for determining if your points are collinear, which means that they lie on the same line. I made a 3x3 three three matrix and it's made up of three different points in 3D space. For example, the first point is 1, 2, 2, which is the X, Y, and Z points respectively. We want to compute the determinant on the C matrix to see if these points lie on the same plane. And we use DET as the function. We pass in the matrix. And if we get a value of 0, that means that these, all three of these points lie on the same line. You can also create identity matrices, and to do that, you use the function called i. And this will return a square matrix with the diagonal being all ones. Next, we have inverse, and like we talked about in the last tutorial, you can't divide matrices. You can only divide a matrix by a scalar, but calculating the inverse of a matrix allows you to divide these matrices, but we know that you are actually multiplying them together. The function for calculating the inverse is INV. Pass in a matrix, and it calculates the inverse. If we wanted to do Y divided by X, we take the inverse of X and multiply it by Y. 
to do the, to do that computation. There's a function called length, which returns the number of columns in your matrix. Matrix X has three columns. I'll make a non-square matrix and determine the length of this and it returns four for the number of columns. Next we have max and min. If you have a 2D matrix then max will return a row vector which contains the max value of each column in your matrix. So I'll go ahead and display X on the screen, calculate max of X, and it returns a row vector of the max value of each column. So we see that the max value of column 1 is 93 and so on. If you just want it to return the maximum value throughout your entire matrix, we can do max of max of X. Max of X will return this row vector and then we take the max of this and we should get 95. And min is essentially the same. Pass in your matrix and it will return the minimum value of each column vector. You can also create an array of ones. To do that, the function is called ones. If you just pass in one argument, it will create a square matrix. In this case, it's a five by five since we passed in five. Or you can specify the dimensions of your matrix. So to create a, a row vector of ones, you can do one comma five, do a two by five of ones. You can also do a column vector, five by one. Display X on the screen again. For this next function, I'm going to first create another matrix. And I'll show you the product function, PROD. So pass in your new matrix that you just created. And this will calculate the product of each column. I didn't want to calculate the product of 93 times 67 times 6 in my head. So that's why I made this new matrix. And we can definitely do this multiplication in our head. 5 times 2 is 10 times 3 is 30. And it returns a row vector of the products of each of your column. You can also calculate the rank of your matrix. which tells you if your vectors in a matrix are linearly independent. So if we do rank of X, none of these vectors are linearly independent, so it returns three. You can reshape your matrix, and to do that is the reshape command. To use this, the number of elements of your new matrix has to be the same as your original matrix. Our X matrix is a 3x3 three three, and that has 9 elements. Our new matrix must have 9 elements as well. I'm going to reshape our X matrix into a row vector. The first argument is the matrix you want to reshape and the next arguments are your new dimensions of the matrix. If you try to reshape this into a matrix without the same number of elements, you will get this error. Number of elements must not change. The next function is called size. Just simply pass in your matrix and it will return the size or the number of rows and columns of, of your matrix. Next we have sort, 
And what this function does is it sorts your matrix into ascending or descending order. Function is called sort, and you pass in your matrix that you want to sort, and it display it, and it sorts each column into ascending order. By default, it'll sort it into ascending order, but you can also do descending. And to do that, you'll force your first argument is the matrix you want to sort, and then your next argument is descend and it places each column in descending order. Next we have sum, which is similar to product, except that it calculates the sum of each column. I'm going to use our P matrix, and it returns the sum of each column of P. So for example, 5 plus 2 plus 3 is 10. Our next function is transpose. And to use that, you do the matrix that you want to transpose and then stick an apostrophe at the end of it. I'll display the original matrix so you can see it better. This is our original matrix and transpose takes this row vector and places it into a column vector. And our last function that I want to cover is called zeros. We covered this in tutorial 3, but if you forgot, the function for that is simply zeros. If we just pass in one argument, it will create a square ma matrix, in this case a 5 by 5 of zeros. This is useful to use because it's much, much faster in computation time. So if we allocate memory using this zeros function, it's much, much faster than creating this matrix in, say, a for loop. That's it for this tutorial. If you like what you saw, please subscribe below or leave a question or comment. Thanks for watching.